Welcome to part three. In this part we're going to talk a little bit about mechanical controllers, digital controllers, and then we'll show you some video of uh, four kilns from small to large. So let's get started with mechanical controllers and look at how they operate. Talk about controllers, whether we talk mechanical or digital, we're talking about two things. Number one, measurement of the heat inside the kiln, and number two, controlling that heat in some way. What you see on the screen is called a pyrometer. It is based with a, of a thermocouple, which looks like a twisted pair of wires inside a, a sleeve, and a meter. The thermocouple actually converts heat into a small voltage. The meter then reads that voltage and moves the needle up the scale. So this is our measuring device. Now let's talk about controllers a little bit. A number of ways we could control the temperature in a kiln. One would be simply to be able to turn the power on and turn the power off at whatever rate we want it and to get the temperature climb and ramp rate that we wanted to have. Uh, in fact, the Quickfire 6 Paragon kiln just uses a switch like that to get the temperature. Another way is to make that process automatic. Uh, like you see in the picture, this, this uh, infinite controller, which has a pyrometer, but also has a dial. And the dial is connected to a bimetallic switch. That's what's called an infinite switch. And the higher you turn on the dial, the uh, faster the switch goes on and off and allows the temperature to climb at a faster rate. Uh, all the way up on high, the temperature would be on, the power would be to kill and all the time it would never turn off. The problem with this is it's not calibrated in temperature usually and so you have to set it at the various positions and actually take the temperature up and, and make yourself a chart so you know what temperature relates to what point on the dial. Now let's talk about ceramic kilns. You can also have a mechanical control on a ceramic kiln. The, uh, the difference is that it uses a wax to control the temperature and the turn off of the kiln. What you see in the picture is uh, called a kiln sitter. A piece of wax is put inside the kiln sitter and when it arrives at the proper temperature it will turn the kiln off. The dial you see is not uh, like on the infinite switch to do anything with temperature. It's simply a timer like an egg timer. It's a backup to turn the kiln off in case the wax does not melt at the right temperature and shut the kiln off. So the main advantages are mechanical switches, whether you're talking ceramic or glass, are they're, uh, they're a little less expensive than digital controllers. They're pretty reliable. Uh, their disadvantages, obviously, they're not as flexible as digital controllers, and that's what we'll talk about next. So let's talk about digital controllers. What makes them so flexible? What kind of things can you do with them? Well, let me give you some examples of what you can do. You can set a kiln to ramp up, that means to heat up, at a certain rate, like 600 degrees per hour, or 200, or 1000, or as fast as the kiln can go. You can also tell it what temperature to go to, so you could say, set it to go at 600 degrees per hour to 1000 degrees. And then you could also tell it to hold at that temperature. So maybe hold for five minutes. Now it has more than one segment, so that would be one segment. Now you can add another segment and say go from the thousand degrees to 1200 degrees at uh, 800 degrees per hour and hold for two minutes and so on. So you usually can have three or four segments in there. Then on top of that you can have more than one program. So one program maybe have four segments and that program may be for fusing a large bowl. You may want to make a small jewelry piece which has different segments, different uh, ramp times, hold times, and so you could have another program to do that jewelry piece. You might have a program for slumping a dish, or even a program for uh, uh, drying a kiln wash on a, on a, uh, a uh, bowl or something. Um, you can also change the temperatures or the whole times or skip segments and not have to turn the kiln on or off which is very handy. They're also more accurate in general than a mechanical. They're fairly easy to fix. Uh, they're made with circuit boards and little computers and nowadays you just replace the circuit board. 
the main disadvantage is they are more expensive than the uh, infinite switch and mechanical controllers and probably a little more expensive to fix too even though they're relatively easy. Uh, most people are now buying digital controllers. There's more kilns sold with digital controllers than with infinite switches anymore. But that's an option that you have and it's a choice you're going to have to make. Let me show you some kilns and uh, give you a better idea of the sizes and some of the different kilns and then it's up to you to pick what you need that fits you best. Remember what I said, pick the biggest kiln that you can afford. Uh, that's my one piece of advice throughout this whole video. Thanks for being with us. Hope it helped you a little bit and we'll see you down the warm glass road. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I want to see some kilns. Ground's quick fire six kiln. It's a 110 volt kiln. takes 13 amps. It's made of a ceramic uh, muffle material. The elements are inside the muffle. It has a pyrometer which uh, reached the 2000 degrees which the kiln won't go to. It has only an on-off switch and uh, you might say why would I want a kiln with only an on-off switch. Well this kiln I can fuse a piece of jewelry uh, and heat it and cool it in about 30 to 40 minutes. So uh, you can also buy an extra controller for it. The muffle is lifted off the kiln by two wooden handles and uh, underneath is a metal that holds a ceramic plate. That's where you put your jewelry or small pieces that you want to fuse. Uh, as I said, the elements are inside the kiln, uh, right inside the muffle. And again, it's a very handy kiln for doing things very fast and very quick. And you can buy an extra parameter or an extra controller that will allow you to set temperatures. I'm now looking at the front of Paragon's SC2 kiln. It's a front-loading kiln. It has a three-button controller uh, that's quite handy. This is an older model and the door only opens 90 degrees, but on the newer models the doors open 180 degrees. This is a 120 volt or 110 volt kiln. It takes 12 amps and it will heat to 2000 degrees uh, fairly quickly. The inside is made of ceramic fiber as you can see and the chamber is 8 inches by 7 and 3 quarters deep and by 5 and 3 quarters inches high. I use a small shelf on a half inch uh, post to hold my pieces. This is a good kiln and I've used it quite a while and it's uh, stood up to the test of time. This is a little closer look at the three button controller on the SC2. When it's turned on the controller first shows all eights and then it will show idle uh, depending on whether I've reset the uh, schedule or that might show complete. The 54 degrees inside the room shows that it can get cool in Texas also. There's basically a start stop button which cycles through the ramp times, the hold times and the temperatures which you increase or decrease by the triangular buttons you see. It's also available with a window and a bead door. It's a fine small kiln for doing small jewelry pieces. This is a medium sized kiln, the Gen Can 18 inch kiln with the Orton Auto Fire Controller. It has 240 volts and 20 amps and it's a top loading kiln that can get to 1700 degrees F, which is all you need for glass. It has a window in the side which is actually between the inner and outer fire bricks. It also has a peephole, but I don't like to use peepholes because there's too much heat. This kiln is a little older and it has elements in the lid held by pins. The newer models have grooves that hold the elements. I keep the shelf off the floor on kiln posts so the elements in the sides can provide heat under the shelf. That way I have heat coming from both directions and a more even heat distribution. I use this kiln quite a bit. This is another view of the window. You can see that you can see clearly inside the kiln. It allows a very good view on the shelf. I often use this kiln when I'm trying to do new larger projects uh, so I can watch how the glass flows and at what temperature it changes. A closer look at the Orton Auto Fire Controller. In this case, when we turn it on, it switches between the eights and complete. Uh, and the actual temperature it was set to last where I had it drying some hardener on a mold. 
The user program is used to program the kiln and the triangular errors move the values up or down. Once you select this feature, you press enter and lock it into memory. The stop or start button does just that, it stops or starts the kiln. The option button provides other options and the delay button can be set for a fixed delay before starting. This is a medium sized kiln and it's a good kiln, it can handle most things that I want to do. This is the Paragon GL24 ADTSD, 240 volt kiln, 30 amps, takes a 40 amp breaker size. Shipping weights 310 pounds, because of that, I chose to purchase a solid metal stand to elevate the kiln to eye level. The stand has partitions to store other items. Below the uh, Orton 12 button controller, you can see some dials. Those dials actually can control separate elements. And sometimes that's very handy to be able to control elements separately. This is a nice kiln. It's a big kiln. Inside this kiln is a whopping 4.7 cubic feet of space. You can see the thermocouple protruding through the right kiln wall. Elements in the door and the kiln provide the extra heat needed for those big projects. I've even used the kiln for multiple jewelry projects, but generally this is the workhorse for larger projects. Well that concludes the tutorial on selecting kilns. I hope the information has helped you. I wish you well on the purchase of your next kiln, and we'll see you down the warm blast road.